So this is uh, I. <laughs> all right. So the, a lot of things happened here. I don't even know. There's people around the corner, so I'm trying not to record them talking. Um, but this building, this building, um, this was this was, or at least this part of the building. This was the entrance to it. It was this was part of a Salvation Army. This is the Salvation Army shelter. It was the Salvation Army shelter in Boston. They had, I think they were, had the men upstairs and they had the women downstairs. And I stayed, I stayed at this shelter many times the first, the first two years that I was homeless. A lot. I stayed here. Well, the thing is, you could call them, you could stay for a week, and then I think you had to be out for a week before you could call again. And of course, you were always, you know, you have to call in the morning at a, cer at a certain time, you know, and hopefully they would have a bed for you. I think, what did they have? They had like, I don't know. A dozen beds, 15 beds, something like that. Uh, most of them bunk beds, maybe all of them bunk beds. Uh, they had a little, a little living room, you know. And it, uh, you know, I mean, it was it's, it was a shelter though. It was a shelter, but you could. I mean, it, it's it's the thing is, when you're homeless, being able to stay somewhere for an entire week and not have to worry about where you're going to sleep for an entire week is is important. You know, I mean, the larger shelters, it's you know either when you get there, or it's a lottery. So the pies treat it every night, it's a lottery, a lottery, a lottery for a bet, you know, a lottery. Um, so, yeah, you know, and that's not, and that's not the only shelter where it's like that, where it's a lottery. But this place, if you could get in, uh, you know, if they had availability, it was, it, you, you could, you, you could be here for a week, you could leave some of your stuff here if you wanted to do that. Um, yeah, so, you know, and the conditions tended to be... It was, it, you know, homeless shelters don't tend to be, they, they don't, they don't tend to be, uh, really, uh, they're not fancy places, right? <laughs> that's just, that's to say the least. And then it would also, the thing that made it more difficult was, was people harassing me. When people would harass me, like if they would harass me, like if they would try to cost all night, that kind of thing, to do it on purpose. And it was hard, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was difficult. That was one of the most difficult things, you know, having people deliberately try to upset me, that kind of thing. So and then something else that happened here, I know that happened here was, uh, uh, you know, they they put they put hidden cameras, at least in the in the actual bathroom, if not also in the showers. Probably they put them in the showers too, but I know they put them in the actual bathrooms, um, because because I know they did, because I know, you know, they were hidden there, and then I started to see like references to stuff um, in ads and that kind of thing, and it was like, you know, I mean, it's just like I have never, <laughs> it's just it was horrible, it was horrible, and I wrote about that online. And then soon after that, they, they got closed down. They got closed down. And I don't know if that was because, I don't know, I don't know really why. I mean, there were various theories about it. I don't know if that was because they, they actually discovered that, they, that there were cameras. And they were like, wow, we have to shut this down before we all get sued. Um, by all the homeless people who stayed here. Because it's not just me. It's not only me that's gotten videotaped. It's, it's everyone who ever stayed in all the places where I've gotten videotaped. People forget this. They forget that. All these people who have had their privacy violated just because they were poor or because they were mental patients, you know, or because they happened to be where I was and, and people were trying to get videotape of me, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's literally hundreds of people have been victimized, hundreds of people, you know, and people, and people are still like quibbling over whether or not I did something to deserve it. You know what? Like, I didn't. Nobody could deserve this. But then what about all of those other hundreds of people? Of course they didn't deserve this, right? So there was that as far as like things that happened here. And then, and then another thing that happened here was there was this night when I didn't get a bed and I had been over at another, actually the Woods Mellon shelter, and I hadn't gotten to bed. It was really late at night. It was really late at night. It was like maybe one or two in the morning, something like that. They had made us wait for like hours and then told us, no, you don't get a bed outside. We had waited outside for hours and they were like, you know, you don't get a bed. And I was walking around with another homeless woman and we kind of just, we just kind of ended up here. You know, even if you can't, even if you can't, get in somewhere like you we, I don't know what we were hoping I think maybe we were hoping they would like let us you know if they saw us, somebody saw us they would like let us you know sleep in the living room or something but nobody saw us so we, we were like literally right here I think we were just like sitting sitting you know like right right in here maybe even on these steps right and then these three guys uh, nobody around so you know in the middle of the night these three guys start walking up the street and then they ask us for money we don't we say we don't have any and then they start to get mad at us and I was like oh yeah you know what you know what's gonna happen? It, it was just very obvious that they were gonna, that they were they were interested in. They were more interested in arguing than they were in anything else. We, of course, we had no money to give them, uh, which they got, which they understood right away. It also meant that we were not important. There's a park literally right across the street from here, and that they were gonna do something to us. And then some guy, some guy just randomly like drove up here 
and I went over to him. I've written about this before. I wrote about it when it happened, and I wrote about it a couple months ago. Some guy kind of like randomly, randomly drove up here, and I just ran up to him and said, and I didn't, I think I had a phone. No, I didn't have a phone then. Um, he drove up here, and I said, you know, please call the cops. Just call the cops. Call the cops. Please do that. Uh, and he did, but then I like latched onto his window so that he couldn't shut the window, and I was like, don't leave us. He, he saw those guys and he wanted to get out. He, he saw those guys and he was like, he, he was like, he was like, I need to leave. He, he would have left us. He just would have left us there. I mean, it's, I don't know. I mean, if you think about it, you think about it, I don't know. You know, what's, what's the, what's the average bravery level of a, you know, just your random human being? I don't know. But he saw, he saw me, he saw the girl, he saw those three guys and he was, he was like right here, you know, like maybe there or that, like on the other side, on the other side of this intersection. Um, you're fine the other side of this intersection um yeah and i and i literally had my like my fingers like like just like curled over the the top of his of his driver's side window and he and he was he was gonna he was like using the automatic like window closer to like roll up the window and i just hung on and i was like you cannot leave us here you cannot leave us here please stay here until the police get here uh and then the police showed up um and they got rid of the guys um and that was it but there's no question what, that they would have done something to us. I mean, this this park was totally empty. It's a place where a lot of homeless people stay anyway. Um, you know, this is not to knock homeless people. Homeless people have a lot of problems. Um, but you know, I mean, these 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 these, these were guys who were definitely going to hurt us. And it was like, literally, I don't I don't even know, I don't even know how it happened that we did not get raped that night. I have no idea. If that guy hadn't driven through, I don't know what the hell would have. I don't know what we could have done. We could only have started screaming and hoping that some people around us would have heard something, you know, and actually done something about it. Uh, because there was nobody else around. You know, there are, there are apartments around here. It's a residential area. But, you know, I mean, people hear things all the time. Don't call anybody. Here's this park. It's a homeless shelter. Right? You know, like, they're probably used to homeless people, you know, homeless people having arguments or whatever. And, you know, that guy, and that guy wanted to leave. He wanted to leave, you know? So I don't know. That was probably one of my closest calls. That was that was probably that was probably one of one of the scariest incidents that I've had being homeless. That was one of them because he, they, it was there was no question what those guys were thinking. There's just was no question at all. Once they started yelling at us for not having any money, I was just like, oh my god, what are we? What's is it, is this is this it? Is this is this is this when it's gonna happen? Is this is this? You know, it's like I don't even know. You know, homeless women get sexually assaulted all the time, all the time. You know, all the time.